See, that is the beauty of using a sticky note on the computer. It's so like you just go in and just erase some things or just edit some things out. And it saves automatically. That may take a little break since the main action's already occurred, so yeah, I guess right now it looks like I'm just going through the weapon shop looking at the different things. So yeah, I'm gonna cut it here and I'll be back and probably record the last part of the session a little bit later today. If I feel like it. After all, I'm still ahead of schedule though, so yeah. And upload, so you know. I guess that's kind of the beauty of working with YouTube. It's like you can work at your own pace and pump stuff out, you know, whenever you want to. If it's like at a decent, you know, time arrangement, kind of, kind of not like with Fallout where it took, took like an entire year just to make <laughs> make the entire series. Like holy shit! <laughs> but ninety bars, that's, that's that's intense for a series, though. They haven't gone that high. But it was a learning moment too, because I kind of learned how to like organize an RPG and how to pace it, and that's where the 30-minute stuff came from. And that's how I caught up with the huge backlog that was earlier that happened earlier in the year. So yeah, every series I do on this channel is like a learning thing. But enough of my bullshit. Let me just go. No offense, but I didn't think you had the money. No offense taken. Okay. And here he is, our campione Ezio. Oh, oh hey, hey Ezio. Ezio! I see you've wasted no time starting the celebration. And why not? You've done us a great service, Nipote. With Vieri dead, La Toscana will grow quiet once more. Do you know what that means? Basta la si passa tutto We get bitches. Sono a bere. E a 
Yeah, what that what? guy said. It's true. <laughs> Come, it's you. Walk with me. Yes, uncle. Hey, we gotta take another walk with this uncle. The Patsy answered to another. Spaniard. He is Rodrigo Borgia, one of the most powerful men in all of Europe, and leader of the Templar Order. Which makes him responsible for the murder of my father and brothers. It's like, dude, uh, you kind of do this later, but, well, you know, it's like you're ruining yes. the story. And he will kill you, too, given the chance. Then I must stand against him if I wish to be free, but not until every other Templar has fallen to my blade. Father's list will guide me. Where will you go next? Firenze. Francesco de Pazzi will share the fate of his son. A sensible next step. No doubt he intends evil for the city. All right, that's enough grim talk for one night. I'll be in my study if you need me. I shall read the letter my uncle gave me. Perhaps it should provide some clues. I wonder what to do next. All right, so. Hello. Good evening and welcome, all that good jazz. I'm your host, Arstrand, aka Restrain006, and we are back in the world renowned Italy. Hanging out with Ezio Atatore da Firenze. I forgot, I don't know, I think that's the name. That may not be his full name. I'm just trying to bullshit that, and like, you know, just put in some more time. So. I know it's been a while, and uh, other things came up, and uh, I know. Of connections and interconnections, it is all ruled by chance, or is it? Okay. See, I'm trying to enter, reintroduce the series, and like, I'm just like, you know what, just fuck it, just, just keep going, just keep doing what you're doing. I could probably tie that because I'm trying to solve a really hard puzzle. Well, it's not that hard. So, this game is definitely a change of pace from Mortal Kombat 9, Grand Theft Auto Online, Operation Flashpoint, <laughs> and some other stuff I tried to do. Did and tried to do. It's like a series created during a huge backlog of video games on the channel. Which has now been reduced severely, so it's just a handful now. It's just five games. They're all new stuff, so, you know. I'll get to them when I get to them, but it, it takes time. So much time. It's like the deeper you go in the puzzles, the harder they get. Until they make absolutely no fucking sense. <laughs> George Washington, Assassin's Creed 3. I think Napoleon was in Unity. Yeah, I think it was in Unity. It's like, now you know the truth. Something happened a long time ago. Oh, damn. What was that? It's like, something happened a long time ago in the Garden of Eden. Seems like the stories were never true. I like how my sword makes a little, you know, wave through the air. <laughs> I 
Oh, and if you notice a subtle color change in the uh, in presentation, is because I actually added a bit of saturation to the video. It's like 20 points of saturation, so. So tell me, you guys like it, you guys hate it, you want to go back to the normal desaturated look, or, you know. Whatever. Look familiar? Well, that codex it's a wall. Is, yes, your father managed to find and translate a few before he... Here. This is not your father's work. Someone else has translated it. Leonardo da Vinci, a friend. Do you see the way the words cross from one page to the next? There is something underneath it all. Some kind of map. Where is it supposed to lead? Your father and I managed to make out bits of a prophecy scrawled across these pages. It was written by an assassin like us, who long ago held a piece of Eden. His name was Altair. He spoke of something powerful and ancient hidden beneath the land. What is it? What indeed? Solving that little mystery is exactly why we collected these pages. Then let me help. It's time I take on my father's work. All of it. I start with the page I took from Bieri. Leonardo will decode it for us. Ben, return here when time permits, and we'll add it to the wall. I I wish it was an option and again to take the hood off. Like man, just like then just pull it up. I pull it up and just take it off. I pull it down. <laughs> it's been forever since I played this, so I don't know what the hell. <laughs> um, I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm just trying to catch up, kind of like everybody else. Everybody to sync up. It's like if you fall long enough, you get the sound of helicopters. It's like joint Ezio Auditore. As it becomes Italy's most. Wow. I can't speak today for shit. It's like, join Ezio Atatore as he becomes Italy's next most profitable businessman. And he takes to it like a duck to water. Or a fly to shit. <laughs> ah, duck to water sounds nicer. a lot better than his brother who is I believe dead I think he died come on Ezio get your ass up there thank you Yeah, I'm trying to make my way across the city. <laughs> Do it like up the air. Nice. It's 
It's like a flashback to City of Violence. I've never seen a stranger man ruling. Yeah, he's wearing all white, has a sword, and like he's jumping from roof to rooftop. <laughs> from rooftop to rooftop. Yeah, they say out there was crazy too. But look at him now! People are like they can't run in this world. <laughs> I'm in a hurry because money never sleeps. So I gotta make that paper dog. Hello. Get that pop in. It don't matter. <laughs> Sarah, you want to train? Yeah. <laughs> I've had enough of training. I want action. Reaction. Salute, Claudia. Our uncle is un monstro. This is outrageous. What's happened? He's making me work. If father was here, I'd never be stuck behind a desk like this. And what are the terms of this supposed enslavement? Since someone decided we're going to stay here, Tio Mario suggested we try and find the money to repair the villa. Problem is, there isn't any. I bet I can bring oh. some money. Oh, great. A you lot of it, too. Me? Well, benissimo. If you start paying for improvements to the town, I'll keep track of them in this book. And since I have nothing better to do, I'll also make note of any objects you bring in from the outside. If you actually get this place up and running, travelers might visit and spend money. Although I doubt anyone will want to come this far out of the city. But if they do, I'll keep the money we make in this chest. You're going to have to show up to take it to the bank yourself. Because when it gets full, I'm just going to take the extra cash for myself. Capito? Deal. Oh, spoken like a true capitalist. So I got first she was ragging on the job and she's like, yo, I'm a bookie, so yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, once the shit becomes full, I'm gonna take whatever it comes in. That's extra, I'm like, whoa. Okay. Uh, this is very interesting because if you actually manage to max this out, 
you can become a very, very wealthy person. And you can basically buy anything in the game. Let's see. Renovations are going to cost way too much. So I think I started with the shops first. Salute, Claudia. You here to look at the book? A presto, Ezio. There he is, man with the master plan. Buongiorno. Is there something wrong? Yes, sir. Mario hired me to deal with this mess, but I'm an architetto, not a miracle worker. Without money, I can't fix any of these buildings. And if someone brought you money? Eh, then we'd be in business. Uh, you must be Ser Ezio. Am I right? Uncle, yeah, they gotta get I shit like done. This architetto. He gets very observant when he can smell money. If you want to fix up this town, I'm going to need it. I have a price list here for new shops and renovations. Just bring me gold, make a choice, and I'll begin at once. If I build you a shop, you, as the landlord, can purchase goods there at lower rates. If you invest more money in the shop, you get an even greater discount. As for renovations, well, you'll be bringing the town and villa back to life. As Sir Mario tells me, that was very important to your great-great-grandfather. Plus, when you buy shops and renovations, you'll be increasing the number of people who visit, causing your income to increase. So, let's take a look, shall we? Let's get filthy fucking rich. That's what that translates to. No, we don't need art yet. That'd be a bad investment. What the nigga isn't. That thing seems like a bad investment. But, you know, realistically, if I was, like, you know, rebuilding the city from the ground up, it's like, what do we need the most? Use doctors. Everybody needs doctors. But what's the most basic thing that we fucking need? Not that. <laughs> I mean, that's a basic instinct, but, you know, that's uh, a little far-fetched right now. Do need soldiers to protect us. Thieves Guild. Thieves could be like informants. But that's more like an assassin's thing, though, so it wouldn't benefit the city. You need a place to put your money, so that makes sense. Do need fresh water. So you need a place to store your money, and you also need fresh water for your city. That way, the people that are already inside the city can live better. Do it. There we go. So now we got water. Buon viaggio. So I did one thing for me, one thing for the city. Nice. Make your money back with a little bit of profit. But they gotta wait like 20 minutes or so. Salute Claudia. 
You here oh. to look at the book? This is where the game turns into a business. <laughs> it's like business strategy. Then also kind of falls through in uh, Brotherhood and Revelations. Not so much in Assassin's Creed 3. Native Americans get no love, man. Or in 4. Or in Unity. <laughs> it's like only in Ezio Skin today, um, actually, like, uh, did Ubisoft actually implement these uh, business practices? Then after that, they're like, you know, fuck it, this shit's too much. <laughs> it's like, nobody's interested in this shit. A presto, Ezio. Don't worry, Ezio. Soon we will have this entire pad just decked out and the most luxurious shit that you could ever imagine. <laughs> Ezio, my boy. I think it's time I showed you something. Okay, more collectibles. <laughs> So he didn't feel like doing this shit, so he's like, here, Ezio, you do it. <laughs> like, you solve all these fucking puzzles. This guy's in a hurry. Shit. <laughs> I'm just walking normally. He's like, he's just hauling ass. <laughs> I guess the anticipation's killing him. This is the sanctuary. It was built by my great-grandfather to honor the memory of the Assassin Order and protect its secrets. Look around. These are the Assassins who guarded the freedom of humanity when it was most threatened. And this is the armor of Altair. Little is known about Altair's life, but his armor is light and very strong. I give it to you, but I don't know how to retrieve it. My great-grandfather told me it would remain locked away until all its protectors were made whole. I heard rumors of crypts located throughout Italia, hidden tombs filled with treasure, where these six were moved centuries ago. Maybe they have something to do with it. In my younger days, I sought the six myself, with no success. Perhaps uh -huh. you will have better luck. I don't think you're telling the truth. <laughs> In order to achieve perfect synchronization with Ezio, you have to get that armor. Thanks. Voice in my head. Take a look at the family tree. What kind of person was out there? It's a violent motherfucker, I can tell you that. I guess dagger kills. Holy shit! Guy has some anger issues.